Hey guys, this is Cam315, joined with my co-host, finally back from his vacation, um, for more My Hero Academia Season 5. Yes, I am back, and for the second video yet, after after my long vacation. Yes. <laughs> um, We've had quite the eventful, uh, well, last week was quite eventful, um, in terms of My Hero, um, with what we saw in terms of getting more of an understanding of the Todoroki uh, drama, or I would like to say uh, keeping it up with the Todorokis. Mm -hmm. um, so that storyline is going to be a major thing going forward in the storyline of my hero. Um, and then we got to see the backstory of how All for One rose to power by essentially manipulating people giving them whatever he wanted and using them like this night sniveling slime ball he is mm -hmm. with, his little, with his little I, brother be, with his little brother being there like uh, defenseless and weak right there not being able to do anything until he was granted the powers of one for all mm -hmm. also i just forgot to mention like oh yeah at that time period he had a he actually had a face Yes, he actually had a face. <laughs> as, yeah. as, for, as for what happened to his, as for what happened to his face, is is still yet to be explained. I think it's because so many times. I think it's because all the freaking smack. I think it's because freaking all might beat him to a living pulp. Or is it because of? Is it possible for like a, a certain amount of quirks to sudden to suddenly start affecting your body? Not for all, for one. Hmm. Okay. I think he the re, I think the reason why his face is all messed up is from the incident when All Might fought him and he thought he was done for good. Mm -hmm. So and then we all know All for One has that regenerative quirk. But anyways, we're not here to talk about All for One. We're here to talk about um, my hero in terms of well a little bit of One for All, and then we finally get the start to Class One A versus Class One B today, which a little snippet of what we're gonna be getting which i was actually shocked we got a little bit of the fight for the first for the first battle um i thought they were gonna leave us on a cliffhanger like okay match start and that's when we leave go be like come back next week to see the full battle but okay i'll take it um so this is my hair academia season five episode uh three um our episode i believe 91 and i'm not gonna do the total episode count because i'm gonna Totally forget, but hey, we're getting close to episode 100 for my hero. Yep, yep, yep. Um, so yeah. Um, anyways, we all know what happened last week with Deku waking up. So finally, I can now say we can finally focus on legit season five content. I know last week had some season five content, but we just had little tidbits of season four still left in there. Thank God we can move on finally. <laughs> um, so Deku goes to All Might and he tells him like everything he saw he told him what i saw in my dream what happened yada 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 and all my he kind of replies he's like huh i saw the same thing as you did so it's like okay all might saw the same thing he got the backstory and everything also he also he doesn't make a mention that um his predecessor his master nanashimura also helped him understand that a little bit more and stuff like that I also, I also like to point out how that how Deku said she was really pretty to to all my. <laughs> I mean, he's not. I wrong. was gonna say that for the end, but okay, if we're gonna get into that. I remember when I read the manga and she and he said that he's like, oh, all my, your master was really pretty. I was like, you think so? <laughs> this I'm like, okay, my boy Deku's got uh, like, some game. I know he knows when ladies are cute. Mm-hmm. Um, and I found it hilarious how all my's like, right. <laughs> um hey take that, take that fan base <laughs> i don't think nobody i think everybody likes nana shimura though yeah i'm just, I'm just saying i'm not i'm talking about deku's sexuality but okay <laughs> oh that i you know. know you know <laughs> um still i still think uh nana Sh what happened to nana shimura was one of the most tragic anime characters to happen you see in that one OVA was just about her on All Might, and then you see how she dies, and it's like, she has a very tragic backstory. Mm -hmm. Well, just wait till that gets expanded upon, because it will in the future. Um, so, 
I'm going to keep that to myself. Well, technically, we already know that Shigarachi is related to her anyways. So you can make season three from that. That's when that will get explained later. Um, anyways, um, so one, All Might, um, is actually shocked to hear that the first user of One For All actually like physically talked to Deku. And he's like, that never happened to me. That's interesting. Um, and that's when Deku brings up the fact, uh, or well, All Might brings in the fact that he said, like I said, it's like, uh, that's interesting that happened to you, but not for me. And that's when we get a, speaking of Nanashimura, we get a flashback scene with Nanashimura and a much younger All Might that looks kind of beefy and everything. But hey, it's okay. Anyways, essentially she's talking to All Might about one for all, about the vestiges, about I'm guessing what he saw in the vestige world. And essentially she makes a comment saying that feelings always come before power. And essentially what she, she what Nanashimura is essentially saying, like the feelings within the past users of the quirks are already embedded within the quirk. So, you know, it's part of its power. Essentially, this was only a theory from her. Essentially, we, she was saying like, one for all is kind of like a living being in a sense, where the past user's feelings are within the quirk and you can feel those people's feelings. You said, you said all for one again. <laughs> one for all. Good God. Um. So yeah, and she even makes a comment. She's like, see, in that, if that's the case, then we can meet each other again if I have fallen. Which, Deku, if you saw, saw Nanashimura and all the other past users of Wound for All. He has only interacted with the first one because he's only at 20%, or barely at 20% of his power. Now, actually, I'll keep that to myself. But, um, yeah, um, essentially, it's a start. It's a start. And of course, you start off with the first user of One for All talking to Deku. Um, so, yeah, um, and that's when you have all my thing is like, it's an interesting way to meet past users. Um, now Deku, he brings up the fact about the quirk singularity theory, which was brought up last season in the Bakugo, Kami, Todoroki, um, training little arc they had there in their trying to get the provisional license for when they failed. Um, and we all know after each generation is born, quirks tend to get abnormally stronger than the past generation. So what Deku is essentially saying is, I wonder if the quirk singularity theory is working on one for all in the aspect, since it's been passed down from generation to generation, from generation since like the start of time, or since, you know, the first user, he got the quirk from all for one at the time when quirks were like just a brand new thing. Like you saw it in last week's episode, they didn't call it quirks back then. They called it meta powers. Um, are you, are you sure it's not just like the English sub translation? No, that's what they called it, meta power. Okay. I was I was just making sure because I, I I I got confused. Like, why are they calling it meta powers? <laughs> they're, yes, they're calling it, they call it meta powers because in the time age when all for one rose to power at that time, quirk were just becoming a thing. Hmm. People just magically got these powers and they didn't know what the heck they were. But um. Yeah, um, he's thinking like since it's been passed down from generation to generation to generation, now that I have it, it's probably much more stronger and much more unique and stuff like that. And All Might kind of agrees with that statement too. And P.S. You'll see how Deku changes with the quirk. Just a nice little hint. Um, so keep your eyes peeled. Um, so that's um, interesting. Deku does talk about the the two users of One For All that were in silhouette form, you can only see yellow eyes coming from them. And they have like, one has like a red, you know, bordering and another one has a purple one. Um, To mention, do not ask me who I know those two are. Even to this day, I do not know who they are. And then funny enough, there was a part in the manga chapter a few weeks ago, um, where there was a part where it looks like the way the chapter ends off, we're gonna understand who these characters, those two mysterious characters are. And then the next chapter presumably doesn't even focus on them. 
it goes into something completely different. I'm like, Horikoshi, stop teasing me with these two. So, <laughs> listen, I don't know. Ow. Um, Oops. Sorry. You I bit my freaking tongue. <laughs> so, oh my god, that's what you get for that's what you get for um, going over the top right there. I was, trying to come, I was trying to come up with a word for that, but no. <laughs> yeah, I still don't know anything about these two. Now, if people are going to look into the silhouettes and what they look like, there has been theories. I'm not going to put up the theories yet, but if you go look on the theories about the two mysterious one for all users, some people think it has something to do with some sort of time traveling type of thing. I won't say what they're thinking of, unless you want me to go into detail, but um, I'll keep that to myself. Maybe at a later date, I'll say that theory that people throw around. Um, but yes, I still don't know who those two are. They're very mysterious to me. And I hate that Horikoshi, every time we see them, he cock teases us. It's like, uh oh, you think you're gonna get it? Oh, no, you're not. Don't bite your tongue again. <laughs> yes. Um, I did also like the panel where um, in the episode where they showed all the one for all users reaching out to Deku in a way, um, which were pretty cool. And mm -hmm. they're all smiling, except for the first user who's like, so yeah. Um, yeah, um, I also do find it interesting that two of them are like colored while you just see the first and second user. I mean, the first and Nana that are just essentially their full color palette. I'm guessing when we go more into depth for those characters, they'll probably show their what their color design looks like and stuff like that. But hey, um, I never got your thoughts. What are you? What are your thoughts of how the other one for all users look like? Are their designs? Hmm. Now, well, um, they actually all look pretty badass in their own way. Yes. Um. <laughs> They, they are pretty cool from what I know of them, and some of them are very funny. Mm -hmm. Um, so, yeah. Um, anyways, um, what happens up next is, like my buddy said, Deku makes a nice comment. He's like, oh, All Might, about your master. She was very pretty. And I'm like... You think so? That's <laughs> my boy. I know. Um, because he flashbacks to a part from season three when All Might said um, his mother's hair looks like his master's. Um, so, yeah. Do um, you want to tell us what happens in the scene when All Might and Deku are talking in the hallways? Uh, they met with Aizawa and a, a certain someone from the past, Shinzo. Yes, who we haven't seen since season two. But I believe, three, but I remember, actually, huh? Season three, actually, he he actually uh, made an appearance in season three. I think even in season four, he made a little cameo. We saw him. Mm. I don't remember. I don't, I don't remember in season four. I think it was in the, I think it was the, when they were doing their little festival thing. I think they showed a little like cameo of Shinzo. Hmm. I might be tripping. Okay. Yeah. Um. Shinzo's back, and he's a big you know, person in this arc. And if I'm gonna be honest, he kind of doesn't do anything going forward after this point. Got mm -hmm. So, I, I, I will say this. I do like his character arc in this store, in this arc, um, which, you know, is only gonna be fleshed more when we get more understanding from a little what we little, what little we got from his backstory in this episode. And then it seems like next week, He's, we're gonna see what he can really do and stuff like that. Um, so it, it's pretty cool. Um, you know, him and Deku have a nice conversation like, hey man, what's up? And he's like, hey, um, so yeah. Um, anyways, what happens is I was like, go get ready because uh, we're about to do our operation thing, whatever. And then that's when we get what we see from the trailers of season five where our heroes are all in their winter suits and stuff like that. Now, there was a comment made by Hagakure, essentially saying like she's not, I guess she's wearing bare bone things because somebody asked her a question like, aren't you cold Hagakure? And she's like, I'm very cold. I'm like, 
Then what are you wearing? Not wearing anything. Oh, she's just magic. She's not wearing anything, dude. She's just she's just wearing her gloves and shoes. <laughs> Don't you remember how her quirk works? Yeah. But if she is legitimately naked, my God. <clears throat> We didn't even know what she looks like anyways. So. I always feel like her power should have been like she can turn herself invisible like Invisible Woman from Fantastic Four. Mm. Mm. <laughs> maybe, maybe if her power develops more, maybe we'll... I feel like that's going to be one thing. You know, maybe Horikoshi will get to a point where she just magically is able to show her human form. Uh, I, I, what I want to know is, what does her parents look like? We probably can't see them. <laughs> what are they, John Cena? <laughs> Good God. Okay, um, anyways, what happens next up is the fact that as they're talking about their uh, costume suits, I like the fact that Deku mentions Bakugo's updated costume change. He's like, shut up, you damn nerd. And he's like, stop complimenting me! Um, so that's funny. Um, you want to care to tell us how Ojiro thought of Deku's new upgrades and then what Ochako thought about that? Uh, she immediately thought of Kami and how, and, and how she was all up on him that day. Was like, Not Kami, uh, Hatsume. Yeah, but, I mean Hatsume, and that's what I mean. was like, get back and stuff like that. I swear, that scene was funny because Ojo was like, oh yeah, Midoriya, you you got a little upgraded design. He's like, oh yeah, the gloves Hatsume made for me. And then you pan over to El Chaco, you just see her eyebrow twitch like, hmm. And then she just thinks of everything that's happened since Deku and Hatsume met. The infamous blow up scene the moment he enters the door. And then, you know, when he was getting, when she was on top of my boy and you could see her uh, <coughs> oops. <laughs> um, <and laughs> Shark was like, then she starts, well, she's like, God damn it, man. So, yes, you can hide away your feelings so much, Ochako, but guess what? If you're gonna have to tell him, dude, and you're gonna have to tell him, Baraka, come on. You're, you're gonna have to tell him, and then two, let's be honest. You may say back in season three, I'm gonna give up my feelings for Deku, but the heart wants what the heart wants. Yes. Once again, take that fan base. <laughs> oh, I, I love to make uh, those shippers mad. That. Yes, me too. Oshako and Izuku is a thing. Oh, they're just meant to be together, guys. They're just meant to be together. Yes, go watch the OVA. Go watch the OVA. They have a nice little moment in, in the OVA as well. <laughs> Cute. Anyways. Who shows up next? Uh, the talkative psychopath from Class 1B. <laughs> this man, he literally starts monologuing on the way there. And then he's like, well, guess what? It's time to get your asses beat today. We're going to prove you're better. Or we're better than you guys. And I'm like. And thank you, Aizawa, for taping him up to to, to his senses. Yeah, Kendo was actually walking over there to actually try to stop him, but Aizawa beat her to the punch. <laughs> He's like, shut up. <laughs> and he's getting choked out. And I'm like, I swear, if I was in this school, I'd probably physically hurt Monoma. Because that man is effing annoying. People actually, people actually ship him with Kendo, actually. Honestly, if there was a, if there were relationships to be started with um, in My Hero Academia for the classes, I definitely could see that happening. Yeah, because there, there, there was this moment back in, I don't remember who it was, like season two or three, like uh, Kendall, like, neck chopped them to knock him out and then dragged them and dragged them behind, behind the bus and like, and then people made comments saying like, they banged that, they banged it back there. <laughs> Whoa, come on. They're like 14, 15 years of age. They ain't... You don't know these people, dude. They would they would sim for anybody. Well, 
maybe they, maybe those people who who commented that were were kids also. Well, speaking from the fact that in the current manga chapter, there are two characters we've seen in the past that were students or that are currently students that are dating. I won't tell you who it is, but uh, yes, <laughs> there there can be relationships that happen between students, um, which is the, is the characters we know. Characters we know, yes. I'll say they haven't been seen too much, but we know those characters. Hmm. Um, so yes, in that aspect, dating is cool among students. Um, it's just, I kind of find it awkward because they got to keep it professionals too in their personal life. But at the same time, hey, heroes dating would make complete sense because why wouldn't you not be dating somebody in your hero course, maybe, or in your same school? Um, I just feel like personally, if you're in a life or death situation, that's gonna make one of you guys worry about each other way too much. But hey, that's what you signed up to do. They're essentially like advanced police force. Mm -hmm. Anyways, let's get into uh, the class 1B students, which I had to pause for every damn screenshot to get their fucking names. I kid you not. Every <laughs> damn time. All right. Class 1B students, obviously led by, uh, what's his face? Um, their teacher, Seijiro Khan, the little beast, beast king guy. So to start off is uh, Yosetsu Awase. He's got kind of a headband type of gig there. Um, interesting design. Okay, spiky hair, looks cool. Next up is Sen Kab um, Kabarara. Um, Again, another normal looking dude. It's just he's got these sleeves on these hands. Um, and then he's got these little, the black sleeve things on his little fingertips. Um, now, an interesting looking fellow is Tugaru Kamakiri, whose face looks like some sort of bug-like creature. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, very interesting. Um, of what his design looks. Next up is, which is probably most, one of the weirdest looking designs is Shihai um, Kuro Roro. Um, his whole body is black. And I mean not, I mean that not to be racist. Hmm. Well, you can say that because you're black. Yeah, he's just black. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Anyways, uh, we already know it's um Itsuka Kendo because we've seen her dozens of times in this series. And let this be known, this is the first time outside of Tetsu Tetsu, Monoma, and Kendo, who we see who are the like three most common class one B characters we've seen. We haven't seen a look of any of the other ones. So this is kind of the first time we see the other um students of their class, which is pretty cool. Um, so we've seen Kendo. We know what she, her hero design looks like. Next up, I told you, Denzel, some of these girls, some of these girls in Class 1B are babes. And one of the girls in the babe is the one red hair, one red hat looking girl, Yu Kodai. <laughs> uh. Simp. Yes, simp very much. She looks hot, uh, even though for some reason she's giving me the vibes of a character that they're just like, oh, okay, that's great. So yeah, essentially like another Aizawa, I don't care type a character. Hey, she hey, she's got look, she's cute. I'll, I'll take it. Um, her hero costume. Um, again, if you want to know what their full hero costume design looks, you can look on the My Hero Academia fandom because they actually put their updated, you know, anime colored designs up. Interesting design. It's kind of bland, but hey, it looks cool. We still have to see what her quirk is. I know what her quirk is. I just got to remember it because it's been a while. Um, I'm guessing, anyways, the next girl, look, if you're into lolly characters and you think if she looks adorable, then go ahead. She's not my type, but okay. And that is the mushroom girl, Kinoko Komori. Hmm. Um, definitely 
gets a lot of, uh, I definitely would say I get energetic vibes from her. I wish, I wish she gets that much. <laughs> yes. Oh. Next girl up. Again, another snack. We've only seen her a few times in this entire series, and that's Ibarra Shiozaki, which is the green plant-haired girl. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one other character I forgot to completely mention. So we've seen her before. If you remember, she made her first appearance, I believe, in the sports festival when she went against Kaminari, and Kaminari got humiliated. <laughs> um, because he's a simp. Yes. Next up um, is, well, who we see at the end of the episode make a full out raid attack is Jiroto Shinshida, um, which is the beast guy. So, he's your beauty and the beast. There you go. <laughs> um, and funny enough, funny enough, um, what is it? Uh, speaking of, um, Kendo is the cla class 1B representative. This, this other character named um, Nigareski Shoda is the class vice rep um, representative. So essentially the vice representative of the class. Um, he looks interesting because he looks like a fucking Saiyan. Well, his clothing design looks like a Saiyan. Like the armor palette looks like the Saiyan armor palette without the thing. And then he's got a scouter. So I don't know if um, Horikoshi took something from Dragon Ball there, but okay. Nice character. Again, another lolly character. And if you're into it, fine. Not me. But uh, yes, this girl, no lie. Her first name is called Pony. Which one is that one again? The, the little girl with the sh big horns. Oh yeah, that, that one girl who, who, who uh, Monoma got taught said something to her in her ear and then she started like start like shit talking uh everybody there in that that one season uh season three yeah uh her full name is pony sutsuno tori don't ask me if i'm getting these names right um i'll have to wait when the dub comes out to how they pronounce the names which the dub has come out today so if you are dub fans be joyful um <laughs> next up is uh the guy who put we saw coda in that little air prison type of square thing at the end of the episode this guy's name is kosai su suabura bara i i don't know how to pronounce these names i'm sorry um he's kind of got a bland design just the fact from his eyes are kind of wide and big good lord um next up Tetsu Tetsu, we know Tetsu Tetsu. He's uh, Kirishima's boy. The steel comparison to him. We already know about Tetsu Tetsu. Which mm -hmm. I'm now finding out that that's his first name and his last name. I, want, I wonder if he can do pretty much do the same thing as well, like uh, imp improve his quirk to, to make it even harder. I'm gonna keep that to myself. I'm gonna keep that to myself. Maybe, maybe we might see that in the battle. I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> um, I think the last uh, girl in the bay, and who I'm taking, she's mine, Denzel. And that is uh, Setsuna Tokage. Of course you would take her. Um, she's the girl in the purple scaly hero costume, and she looks dope as shit. And I remember when she was first revealed, people were simping for this girl. <sighs> um, adorable. So, uh, you can have anybody else with the Class 1B girls. I'll take Sitsuna. <laughs> yeah. I knew you'd be grabby for her. I never said that, but... <laughs> Anyways. She's something. Speaking of how... You know how I brought up the fact that one character's name is Pony? Yes. Well, there's another character that has a very awkward, funny-ass name. Manga Ugadashi. The guy in the episode that had literally a manga page as his face. Uh. <laughs> um, He's a complete gag character for me, in my opinion. But I was laughing. 
I totally forgot about that guy. I'm not even gonna lie. <laughs> so, uh, they have some very odd people in their class. Um, next up is Jiriza Ho Honen Nuki, the guy that looks like Saro with the mask covering thing. Um, now, if you go on the wiki, you can actually see what his actual face looks like. And for reasons, you probably want to hold off on that. Okay. Um, next up is the guy that literally looks like a damn Pokemon, or Dusnor, is uh, Kojiro Bondo. Yeah, he literally looks like Dusnor when I look at him. Um, <laughs> if you play Pokemon, you know what I mean, or who that Pokemon is. Otherwise, look that up. Um, next up, we got the annoying asshole, Nato Monoma. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, next up is, uh, Reiko Yanagi. Um, and then the last guy is Hiryu, Hiryu Rin, who is the guy that's got the face covering thing. But uh, yeah, those are Class 1B characters and stuff like that. So uh, what were your thoughts on Class 1B? Seeing them, well, we saw a little bit of them in the past, but now getting development on them. I hope to see what they can fully do now. Yes, we see a little bit of what one of them can do at the end of the um, Now, who is the surprise guest joining the, you know, the uh, battle? The one and only Shinso from, uh, you know. Yes, normal course, normal course C. And um, you want, do you know the re do you remember the reason why he's here? Mm, he, uh, he's got a lot of catching up to do, and uh, he's still aiming to be, he's still aiming to be the best hero to help to help everyone. So he's doing this. Yes. Um, He's also transferring courses, so he's gonna be in a hero course now, which is pretty cool because we know from season two he wanted to be a hero. And he's kind of inspired by Deku, to be honest, and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Um, you want to go into the backstory of what we see a little bit of it? Of uh, uh, people we're talking about is Quirk. Yeah, Shinzo. Mm, well, we have we we are, we've already seen that backstory though, but. Uh... <laughs> I've actually seen that story before, remember? I don't remember that, but... <laughs> yeah, like, uh, his friends were talking about how, how cool his quirk is, and they have, like, uh, they, they, they say that he can do a lot of bad stuff with it. Yeah. <sighs> what a great influence of friends, huh? Indeed. They're already thinking about doing bad things, just because he's got a pretty, uh, a pretty cool quirk that technically is like a villain type quirk, but at the same time, it could be a hero quirk if you use it right. So, yeah, pretty yeah. cool stuff. Pretty cool stuff. Um, Shinzo goes on to say, listen, I'm not here to make friends, so let's get something straight. I'm not here to be your buddy. I'm here to do the work, be a hero, because I'm significantly behind you guys, all of you guys. So don't expect me to raise out a Helping hand. I'm doing this for myself because I want to be the best hero I can be. And I like that mindset. You know, you're like essentially dead last. You're new to this stuff. You wouldn't want to be trying to make friends. You wouldn't try to find and improve your own way. Again, I like the development that gives Shinzo's character in this arc. One of the good things about this arc that I do like, even though I think, even though I like this arc, I still think it's the worst arc in My Hero Academia. Um, it's something I definitely wouldn't go back and watch over and over again. I'm not saying it's bad, but it, if you're ranking it in My Hero Academia arts, this would probably be my bottom one. Hmm. Is that bad? <laughs> no, it's... I just said it's not that bad. It's just, in terms of what we get here, it's cool, but... There's no really implications on what happens for the outside of the world, other than what happens for really Deku in here. So, yeah, it, it is what it is, but we just, just have to move on. Okay, um, 
He also Shinzo also goes to say that um he sees them as a wall that he has to overcome. So I like that. I like that out of Shinzo. Um two, his design for now, since he doesn't have an official hero costume, is he's wearing his typical UA training gear. But he's got the I guess Aizawa like type of band things. And then he's got a nice little Aizawa looking or not Aizawa, Deku looking mask. Mm-hmm. Um, which actually he uses in battle. Yeah, in a really interesting way, actually. <laughs> yeah, we'll get to that soon. Um, anyways, this is when we get the rules announced for class 1B and class 1A. So these matches will be handled like this. There will be teams of four in each battle. Um, Shinzo will actually participate twice on both a class of class of 1B and a class are on a team on 1A. Um, so essentially that means two matches in this whole battle series will be 5v4, um, which again, it's funny because the characters are like, wait, that would give them a significant advantage. And you just have the teachers like, no, it wouldn't because you got to look at it like this standpoint. You don't know how Shinzo operates. And the thing is, guess what? Just because you're bigger in numbers doesn't mean you'll always win. It always comes to what's up here, which we see a little bit of brain stuff in terms of, you know, I guess you can say strategy and what we see a little bit in this fight um, that comes up to end of the episode and stuff like that. Now, the objective to win, well, one, the matches are 20 minutes in length. And then how to win, you essentially have to capture four people and put them in this prison cell and stuff like that. And essentially, your team is, how can I say this without being so damn confusing? Essentially, the teacher's like, think of yourselves as the heroes and the opposing team be the villains. Which, I found it funny that Ido was like, my God, how are we supposed to freaking say that we're villains, but we're heroes, but then they're, oh like, Ida, you make things too much harder on yourself. And again, I don't blame him. I mean, that's, that is pretty confusing. <laughs> uh, don't you love Ida's character? Um, so yeah. Anyways, we get the announcements of the team battle. So the first battle we see to end the episode off a little bit is Kirishima, Sue, Kaminari, um, and Ko Koda. And then we see um, Shinzo join that team versus Shiozaki, uh, Shizi Shishida, uh, Suabara, Su Suburaba, and Rin. Um, the second, I, I can't pronounce that fucking name, man. <laughs> I can't pronounce that damn name. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> you were struggling right there, dude. <laughs> <laughs> These names are so damn hard, man. You are That's struggling. I, you were struggling with those things, and, and I was gonna let it go. But that was way too many stutters right there, man. Look at you sounding like a broken record. What were you trying to say? Abri, 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 abri. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Um, the second matchup after this matchup. So we're going to know the orders of the fights, everybody. We're not going to be like, when's Deku going up? When's Deku going up? No, we know the orders of the fight now. The next fight after the Kirishima Shinzo fight um, is Tokoyami, Momo, Hagakure, Aya and Ayama versus Kendo, which I find it funny that they put Momo and Kendo in the same type of verses because the two characters know each other very well. Mm -hmm. Like they're friends, but they're going up against each other as opponents now. <laughs> um, Kendo, Manga, yes, my boy Manga is gonna fight. He's gonna be, he's gonna be putting out Manga panels and be like, this is the power of my manga spread. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, okay, back from that quick awkward silence break we had, literally when we were looking at your mom over there. Um, the last guy um, after manga is um, Kuri Roro and Komori. So the third fight is Ida, Todoroki, Ojiro, 
and Shoji versus Tetsu Tetsu, Pony, uh, Kaibara, and Honuki. The fourth battle is Bakugo. So for you Bakugo stands, you're gonna have to wait a few weeks. Um, Sero, Jiro, and Sato versus Setsuna, um, Bondo, Awase, and Kamakiri. And then obviously, shockingly enough, one, again, shipper-wise, it's an, it's an obvious ploy that you put Declan and Chaco together. But uh, obviously, you have the main character of your series go up last. Um, so the fifth and final matchup will be Deku, Ochako, Mina, and Mineta. What a weird pairing. Um, versus annoying face Monoma. So hopefully Deku smashes him into oblivion. Um, Kodai, Shota, and Yanagi. Also, Shinzo will be on that team. Which is very interesting because... I kind of figured he would be on that team since uh, since the opening kind of teases that De- Deku, Deku versus Shinza again. Yeah. Um, so definitely, you're going to get that Deku versus Shinzo rematch. The only question is, will Deku fall for his tricks again? <coughs> Bless you. <coughs> Bless you. <laughs> yes, that's going to be the only question. Will Deku fall for his trick again like he did in season two? Hopefully, he's learned his lesson. Mm-hmm. Um, anyways, we see All Might and Midnight Show, which Mina makes a funny ass comment. She's like, Oh, look, it's All Might and Midnight. Aren't Are you, you guys dating or something? And Midnight's like, I'm sorry, I'm not into older men. <laughs> How old is Midnight? I have to look that up, actually. Is she old? <laughs> Just I, me. I think she's like in her late twenties, early thirties. Last time I checked, all mm. my stuff in his fifties. So, but let's be honest, we do see those two characters a lot together. It would only make sense why they wouldn't. I don't know. Maybe, yeah. maybe Midnight would like more bulky All Might instead of more skinny All Might. Yes. May bulky all might rest in peace. <laughs> uh, yes. Um, I just found that comment hilarious. I'm like, man, I, did you really have to disrespect my boy all might like that? Right in his face? He didn't really take. He didn't really take offense to that at all, though. Well, you know, inside he probably did. He's like, come on, man. I was the number one pro hero. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, um, All Might goes on to say that Class 1A, it is good with all the past incidents that they've been through, but he has made, he did make a point that Class 1B, their grades are better, and they have been improving. So, it's going to be very interesting to see, and he's like, I can't wait to see, which, again, that's what I also did like, too. We all, um, you know, we always focus on Class 1A, but, you know, this is kind of the moment for Class 1B to try to get wins against Class 1A to be like, you know, we want to get out of their shadow. Um, we want to be our own class where we're the one talked about. And it's funny because early in the episode, they mentioned the fact that their play they did was better than the musical Class 1A did. I'm mm-hmm. um, early in the episode. So literally these guys were like, we're tired of Class 1A stealing all the spotlight from us. We want to beat these guys and this is our chance to do it. So... I can see why they're very <clears throat> into doing this. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. All right. Now we start the first matchup. So one, um, Shinzo actually says that the best course of action is to take care of people with the most troubling quirks, which is very much very interesting. And I like that strategy at all. Um, we see Koda actually use his birds to his advantage to scout out everybody, which is a very, and I mean, very smart strategy. But would you say that strategy worked, my friend? Not exactly, especially when you're dealing with another animal, technically. Yes, you care to explain how the episode ends off? Yes, the beast guy, whatever his name is. Uh, that- I, got, I got the name for you. Uh, no. Shishida. 
Peta makes an appearance and, and attacks uh, Kirishima and uh, Sue. Yes. Um, we find out what his quirk is, actually. And I got it down so my buddy doesn't have to say it. His quirk is Beast. You know, I, 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 I would have said it myself because that was pretty simple. <laughs> yes. Um, essentially, we find out that he has a human form too. He can transform into a beast, essentially. So it's like a Super Saiyan transformation. Um, hmm. So essentially, it's increased physique, strength, hearing, smell, and sight. But the thing is, which I'm guessing is his downfall, or I guess his weakness and his quirk is he can go out into a frenzy. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if um, our team is going to uh, use that against him. Um, so yeah, um, then all of a sudden, he, all, all of a sudden you wanna explain what happens going on next after he attacks them? Uh, he, uh, oh, uh, Shinza actually mimics uh, his partner's voice and uh, now Mr. Beast Man is, is brainwashed. Yes, and two, uh, the Suabara guy, hold on, what's this, what's this guy's first name? I'm not saying that guy's name. Um, Kosei. Um, he puts, um, we didn't see what his quirk is. I'm guessing maybe they'll say it next week, but he puts Koda into this air prison type of box container thing. And it's really interesting to see what he does with that. So he's able to like, I guess, trap people, I'm guessing, in an enclosed space. He does that, like my partner, my co said, um, by using his mask thing, um, Shinzo's brainwashes, um, obviously Shinshida, and be because he used his partners on the guy's voice back. And I'm like, oh, okay. And essentially what Shinzo says, um, that um, he, um, he says that his other vocal cords, his persona cords are doing it. And at the same time, he's adjusting his mask um, or with some little thing. And that's when the episode ends off. Mm -hmm. So Shinzo getting a boss moment at the end. And then, hey, it seems like uh, we're going to find Shinzo taking it out, you know, all the way next week. But um, very good episode of My Hero. This is definitely going to be a long video with what I've been doing. But hey. Um, very much enjoyed this week's episode. What were your thoughts on this week's episode, my friend? I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> yes. Um, so next week, I'm guessing we're going to get the battle of that fight and maybe its conclusion to get started into the next battle. And then, yeah, but if you guys like the video, leave a like. Put in the comment section your thoughts on this week's My Hero of My Hero Academia. Um, two, again, I will mention yet again that if you are fans of the My Hero Academia English dub, Episode one of season five has come out on Funimation. If you have a Funimation subscriber account or premium account, you're able to watch the episode English dub free of charge. No ads either. Um, if you don't want to pay the toll or pay the fee, then sadly people for the dub fans, um, you're gonna have to wait till May 8th to watch it on actual live television on Toonami from My Hero Academia season one, I mean, season five, episode one. Um, I know, if you're too desperate, get the account, okay? And I know people are gonna be like, but I'm just gonna watch it off those illegal websites. Please support the official release, guys, please. Listen, I'm not, I'm not gonna get on you if you go that route, but I would be much more happy if you want the official release because you're actually paying the dubbing companies to get their money for what they do. Yeah, and like those illegal websites, they, they, they won't know that you're giving it some love and stuff. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, I'm always an advocate of watching the official release of, you know, an anime because, hey, I think you should do that. Um, even if there is a fee, like I've said it before. Funimation, the lowest, you know, subscription you can make is $5, you know? If you, 
unless you don't have like self-sufficient funds, like you don't have no source of income, I think I think paying five dollars a month isn't bad. Um. So yeah. Um. But hey, that, it, it's up to what you guys. Anyways, yeah. Um. So put in the comment section if you're hyped for the dub. Again, if you don't want to do it and you are patient enough to wait, then you have to wait a whole month. Um, to get your English dub on live television. Um, and then hit that subscribe button if you want to get more My Hero Academia content. For my manga viewers who check out this review, you'll be getting a manga chapter up later today about the most recent chapter of a very highly anticipated rematch, I will not say. Um, so yeah, um, other than that guys, um, again, do not leave spoilers in the comment section regarding anything that happened further in the manga because my co-host over here is an um, anime only and um other people that check out the videos might be anime onlys as well anyways guys hopefully you guys have a great rest of your day and hopefully you guys are staying safe out there until then guys we'll see you guys on the next video peace <laughs>